Uh, now we're just going to write into a hash camera. So, managing a number of is all dead and This thing is funny. Uh, and half of us, we can manage all the management systems in every pocket. And the asset is operated as a function of the concentration. It really means uh, managing and handling, administrating the new customer security. Because a lot of work is happening in that area. And that's why I had a team from Parking Group uh, for Sid and Shriva, who are the Apache Market Managers, as well as the staff at Parking Group. So please welcome Shriva and uh, Sid. Uh, 
I'm not going to show you what these stock indicators. When you have a, a you know, set of nodes or a post in your cluster which has three countries, nobody will actually indicate that to you if you don't have to you know, do anything immediately. Uh, so, with that, we'll just do a starting video, which is actually a, a quick uh, two minute video of actually managing a 2000 cluster, uh, a new cluster, using Amari. So, as you see here, this is Amari dashboard with all the graphs. These are all the chips you can customize it to a new reference to Amari. And we're going to actually add a change to the fix for a set of uh, railroads to the cluster. So, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to create a new configuration group. Let's say this is your next generation of main nodes you can add with different hardware configurations. So I add the config group. I add some most to the config group. You can use any expressions to a filter. So this is then specifically good when you have a very huge cluster to manage. And we select the three nodes uh, at random. Once the configuration is created, I'm going to go to the configurations, change of SGFS, and change the particular configuration property for my new configuration. So, as you can see, the rest of the properties are actually grayed out, so they are read only, and you can override them based on uh, what configuration is selected. So, as soon as I save the configuration, I see a uh, start indicator up here. So, Amari is telling me that we have some nodes that are still in the cluster, and we need to uh, run uh, some kind of a job to actually. Uh, to do, do the refreshment fix, I'm going to trigger a rolling restart, which is a shock, and um, actually do the, the restart operation in a batch. But not all the data nodes are restarted at the same time, and I do not expect the cluster to come when it applies the operation. So, skipping to the end of the rolling restart, uh, have all the batches executed. You can, of course, do things like uh, schedule the uh, restarts with a certain time delay, and you can also uh, configure failure problems. So, if one of the configurations has a bad value here, the batch is broken, and the rest of the restarts do not happen. Alright, so that's the video for matching two customers. Um, then we go to the next feature, which is blueprints. So, as the name suggests, a blueprint is actually a description, descriptive definition of the entire customer. So, Amari right now allows you to export the definition or import the definition. So, if you think about it, there's a lot of use cases with this particular feature. Uh, one of them is customer system. So, once you have a holy grail of a blueprint created as a cluster admin, you can just reuse that to spawn clusters in your uh, you know, uh, data center and destroy them and then you don't need them. So, blueprint is uh, one way to do that. So, uh, to look at the API calls for blueprints, you have a blueprint resource provider. Uh, you create a blueprint, which is how you want your cluster to be, and then you create a, uh, this is basically two calls. The second call is saying, okay, now we actually create a cluster which is. So, this is this type of exploit. First call is actually to create a blueprint, second is to actually create a cluster which is a blueprint. So, as you can see, obviously, you can create multiple clusters using the same blueprint. Yeah, uh, look at the API call, actually API call is great. So how we go about actually creating a blueprint is a table with your cluster which is already existing. You create a host group with components which actually are in front of the host in the cluster. And once you have them, you just create a host group in the blueprint definition and assign it a current entity. So when the blueprint is executed and the cluster gets created, you will get uh, those many hosts in your cluster. So you create a host group, say master, you can create uh, 10 masters in your cluster in the same configuration, in the same uh, set of components on it. And lastly, the, uh, the cluster definition also takes, takes this accuracy to the stack uh, of the components that we can provide. So, a quick uh, look at the slide. This is actually an uh, integration of Microsoft Azure with Ambani uh, Blueprints to actually integrate a Create on the cluster. So this is an action use case which has been implemented. So all you need is a uh, list of security details and the Microsoft uh, system center actually creates the cluster for you using a body database. All of it happens in the group. Uh, another feature of a body is a maintenance mode. Um, again, as if you have a cluster and you have a set of hosts which you want to treat differently from the rest of the cluster, so 
especially I'm playing around with the few books. I, I want to uh, turn off alerts completely for those books. I can use Twitter as well to actually, uh, you know, create a pile within the customer. And you know, work on those notes, but they are going to come into the back of the customer. So, Twitter is what allows you uh, to do that. Do we ask us? Speech share for understand. But it allows you to move for other inputs and other inputs. Uh, you know, sorry, the resource manager is making his master around the cost. Okay, so now let's come to extensibility. So this is what really uh, differentiates the body uh, and makes it a kind of a platform. So you can actually add your own stack, you can add your own services on a body with absolutely the pro of the knowledge of a body in the world. So how do we enable that? So uh, if you look at this slide, it shows you the two stack definitions. One is the default stack definition, which is the uh, HTTP stack with uh, uh, you know, all the components. And the other stack is actually something that Red Hat has created. That you can replace HTTPS with RESTOFS and uh, put all the rest of the components together. Um, both of these stacks will be fed to Amari. Amari will actually allow you to create a cluster which corresponds to this definition. Uh, the available stacks can be explored to the rest of the So, this is how UI actually. Do I have a blueprint so I can give a cluster in a body? It goes ahead and finds out what stacks are available. It takes an input from you of what stack you have created and then dispose from them. So all of those hooked up in such a way that can be still easy and uh, you know, better to store than any store. Alright, so uh, you can sort of stack whether it has uh, services, it has components, it has command scripts. You don't have to go into all of the details, but uh, all of these definitions are captured inside the stack. So stack is actually a complete definition of all the things stored in one of the customers. So how to start an HDFS uh, name group, how to start a HDFS service, server, how to decommission that data, all of that is actually embedded inside the stack definition. And nothing is uh, rest you know, outside of that. So Buddy actually treats it as a black box. All the things that you want to do on your uh, stack components are inside the stack. And obviously you have a place to extend the stack, so that you don't have to redefine everything. So there's a bunch of inherent boosts in stack definitions. So the mechanics of the stack, let's say you're playing around with a body uh, tomorrow and trying to add your own service. Uh, what happens is that the agent actually checks to the server, uh, the, the ME5 checks some of the stack details to find out if anything has changed. So if you have a, a size of a cluster, you do not expect to make changes to other nodes. You will automatically get the changes to see the on the server side. So, yeah, that's something to note in the stack of hands. Right. Uh, so, when the command goes from the server to the agent, the agent actually goes to the stack definition and looks up what it has to execute. So, if you say star A, you will actually execute the definition of star inside the stack. This is an example of a little definition of a service inside the stack. Uh, this is HDA service. So, it has configuration, it has package, which is all the scripts that I just talked about. There's the return for XML, which is the definition of all the service and what it contains. Uh, metrics is all the Ganglia metrics that is used to push Ganglia. And you'll find the metric, what you want exposed to come by the API in this particular JSON file. So this is the metric for file. It defines the HDS master component. It uh, issues the script that it will execute and also the commands that it's supposed to. So all of this is the uh, exploded version of the HDS service package, you have you know, all the scripts, functions, uh, the template files, you know, the files, all of that inside of those uh, service package. So, uh, at this point, uh, you know, the, the resource management framework that Amali actually uh, has right now, it doesn't, it, it's, if you are familiar with Puppet or Chef, it will give you a similar kind of Python, you know, a capability without having to write all those scripts. So, if you look at this, it's a very simple definition of the HDS master uh, you know, the manifest. It's extends the Python class for Z, and that will be available when you try to add your service. And so you can do something like this. Uh, if you look at this, uh, what I'm doing here is an external config is actually creating a HDS site on my host. And all I need to do is write this code as a code. So what I'm saying here is take uh, this would be a JSON app that the server will send down to uh, the host. All the configurations that will come in the HDFS site and we'll serialize them and kind of put the HDFS site for example. So all these four lines of code achieve that. So it should be very easy for you to, uh, you know, if you're familiar with the topic uh, resources, it should be very easy to actually write this yourself. 
Alright, uh, so we look at scale, uh, already in scale and we know this for you. So what we have tested currently is with the 2000 load cluster, so about 161 actually efficient uh, supports of 2000 loads uh, and you know, with one single point zero. Uh, just some metrics to present, uh, you can just click on them. Uh, a lot of optimization when you do one six hundred is and you know to allow uh, support for the plasma customer. Again, all of the optimizations were done at the application level and none below it. So technically you should be able to go beyond the plasma to so keep it away. So uh, what is the requirement to go beyond the customer? So if you look at the enterprise cluster of ten thousand nodes, what do you require? You know that uh, the monitoring system is going to be Canada and the operating system is Arches. So uh, both of those groups uh, have some bottlenecks in the way of implementing. So this is one of the problems that nobody needs to solve to actually scale out the other customers. Alright, uh, so that's it. And then 
I use a lot of things as well in this. So now we are providing a support for early computers. When you run live queries on this, you are going to see basically a visualization of how that particular type query ran. So you will see something like this. This is a higher query that ran. And you can see the test tab. And basically all the edges and the different type of test were seized. All the high operating plans that were executed and all that. So I'd just like to give you a quick demo of it. Uh, so if you are, so this is somebody and you go to the jobs, you are going to see basically all the high log test queries that were run. So I'm just going to launch a, a console and uh, as high, I'm going to run a high query. What I have to do is since it's using test, it's going to edit a, a high query ID and then you will immediately see in Ambari there are new jobs available on the server. So what's going to happen is you can then come to Ambari and then you see that the high query has finished. When you click on the new job screen, you're basically going to see the job that you just ran with that same ID. You can basically hover over the, the jobs, the high queries, and then see what query it is. And then you can basically go to the, uh, the job and then see all the best vertices for each of those vertices and then uh, uh, we have some modules and then we can go through all the edges, as edges, because uh, there are different types of edges. If you have large queries, uh, it will be a problem to visualize it, so we have uh, scaling and more layer scale and uh, if any of the layouts don't work out for you, then you can basically visualize your high query button. This is helpful because generally high queries generally get to the cost of the huge. And this will be a good way for you to see your high query and see the problems are. Apart from that, you can see the high operating time and the setting box that we have. We'll show you the exact high query and we have a link to the YARN application that ran. So if you have any errors, then you can basically go there and see exactly what the error is and all that. So this is a new feature that we have introduced on this other problem and hope you can apply and you can see that. Uh, so you've seen a lot of information on there, I just want to uh, tell you what it is. Uh, so when you land the high query, you run a lot of metrics uh, like the compass. We just show you those compass in the body. Uh, so all the HTTPS and HTTPS parts are there in the new red and the low HTTPS. So that will be the first and last vertices. And uh, all the file HTTPS parts are the new file assets. They don't represent the data going from vertex to vertex because this doesn't do it differently than map queries. And then split of parts is basically those that are split going from one vertex to another. So one vertex is basically split the parts to the input as well as output. So if you are using these circuits, you can form. And then similarly for the DAG, the different uh, tests, we have some important metrics for all vertices that we show, and then the different type of vertices on the high vertices. So we make use of the RPD separation management server. So when you run the library, all those uh, high level tests, they push the metrics to the patient and my server, and the body basically puts it and shows it. So you need to make sure that it is as well. You need to make uh, one config enable, which is changing your high execution engine from MR to this, and that's all you need for giving the high queries inside the body. Once you do that, you will get all the jobs taken. Uh, and we also scale to uh, large size queries. I just want to show an example of this. So this is from the PCH. Uh, uh, I think this is a very large query. So just imagine trying to understand what this query is doing and what the performance problems are. So we basically allow you to visualize it. Uh, you can do all this to be something like that. Uh, but basically, you can see all the communities, which are the systematic problems. So you can work on this and look at what high operators are working there. And no way to so this is the jobs uh, uh, thing that we have provided and uh, we will get you to provide your papers. Uh, so those are the, uh, the main features that we have introduced in the market and uh, we thank all the companies for helping us get there. And uh, so we encourage you to bring your services and your views to the market, uh, sorry, to the market and their shareholders and the company. So these are all the links uh, for and uh, we have reason about you on six on the street, so we can get you on the other ones. Thanks.
So, besides the markers, uh, so the question is, where can I get a log? Can I directly get a log for different name nodes from this tree? So I think this one of the pending years on the project if you look at it. So we want to build a, a log search after some point. Somewhere in the world search on logs. Right now we don't have the computer.